Hello everyone and welcome to the second lecture of hematology and as Dale Carnegie said flaming enthusiasm backed up by hard sense and persistence is the quality that most frequently makes for success so it's not just the beginning but also the persistence so today we're gonna take a more detailed information about bone marrow what is the bone marrow and how much cells produced by it and then we will take short history and medical terms that uses the bone marrow then we will take the bone marrow circulation and the structure and let's get started the bone marrow or medulla osseum in latina is semi-solid tissue found within the spongy bone or cancellous portions of bones so as we can see here, the cancellous bone, which is also called trapecular bone or spongy bone, is a light porous bone enclosing numerous large spaces that give a honeycombed or spongy appearance. And this trapecially actually arranged along lines of stress. And this spongy bone is usually surrounded by a shell of compact bone, which provides greater strength and rigidity. So it's present in most areas of bone that are not subject to great mechanical stress. And the open structure of cancellous bone enables it to dampen sudden stresses. And the cancellous bone can be transformed to the compact bone through the action of the bone forming cell, the osteoblast. So the medulla is the innermost part of the bone or anything and the central cavity of bone shafts where red bone marrow and or yellow bone marrow is stored is called the medullary cavity or the marrow cavity the bone marrow compromises approximately 5% of total body mass in healthy adult humans and approximately it's producing 500 billion blood cells per day and about 10 billion of erythrocytes and 1 billion of leukocytes are produced per hour in steady state. The bone marrow is the area that is involved in the formation of red blood cells and white blood cells and the calcium supply for bird eggshells. The area has been detected in a fossil bones despite the fossilization process and the medical term intramedullary means inside the bone. Examples include intramedullary roots, which is used to treat bone fractures in orthopedic surgery and also intramedullary tumors occurring in some forms of cancer or benign tumors such as an enchondroma. So after we finish the bone marrow definition and the medical terms that use the word bone marrow, let's jump to the structure of the bone marrow. The composition of marrow is dynamic, composed of a mixture of cellular and non-cellular components, shifts with age and in response to systemic factors. And depending on the prevalence of the hematopoietic cells vis fat cells, the marrow characterized as red or yellow marrow or medulla osseum rubra or medulla osseum flava respectively. And in circumstances of chronic hypoxia, the body can convert yellow marrow back to red marrow to increase blood cell production. As we can see in this lovely image, this is the spongy bone which is lined by a thin vascular membrane called endosteum and surrounded by compact bone and this is the red marrow and this is the yellow marrow. Ok, let's jump to the cellular part of the bone marrow. As we can see in this scary picture that all types of hematopoietic cells including both myeloid and lymphoid lineages are created in bone marrow. However, lymphoid cells must migrate to other lymphoid organs such as thymus gland in order to complete maturation. And these 10 blood lineages are red blood cells or erythrocytes, platelets, neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, and monocytes. Also we have T and B lymphocytes and natural killer cell. And finally we have the dendritic cells. And we will talk about stem cells in more details in next videos. So let's jump to the non-cellular part of the bone marrow or the stroma. 
It's include all tissue not directly involved in the marrow's primary function of hematopoiesis, but may be indirectly involved in hematopoiesis play as microenvironment that influences the function and differentiation of hematopoietic cells. So they provide the growth factors and work as adhesive network to support the hematopoietic stem cells. First we have the reticular fibroblastoid cells. These cells form the adventitial surfaces of the vascular sinuses and extend cytoplasmic processes to create a lattice in which blood cells are found. The lattice itself can be demonstrated by reticulin stains of marrow sections, while the conformation of the meshwork of reticulin and location of hematopoietic cells in the network of vascular sinuses is illustrated by scanning electron microscopy. The second component of the stroma is the macrophage cells, which contribute specially to the red blood cell production as they deliver iron for hemoglobin production. And we have the adipocytes or the fat cells and the osteoblasts, which synthesize the bone, and the osteoclasts which resorb bone and finally the endothelial cells which form the sinusoids. So the fibroblastoid cells give the adhesive network and with the endothelial cells and macrophages and T lymphocytes they provide the growth factors and cytokines which are important to the survival and proliferation and differentiation of hematopoietic stem cells. Okay, now let's jump to the final subject in this video, which is the bone marrow circulation. The marrow circulation compromises central and radial arteries that ramify in the cortical capillaries, then join the marrow sinusoids, and finally drain into the central sinus. As we can see in this image also, that the nutrient artery penetrates the bone cortex and then give the central artery which give the radial artery and then ramify to the cortical arteries that go to the venous sinuses and finally to the central sinus and to make things more clear there is a three types of capillaries first the continuous and the fenestrated and finally the sinusoids the continuous type of capillaries have basement membrane and endothelial layer that is not interrupted and the typical location of this type is on the fat, muscle and nervous system. After that we have the fenestrated type of the capillaries which have an intact basement membrane and fenestrated endothelium and the typical location of this type in the glomerular of the kidney and the gut mucosa and the endocrine glands. And the last type of the capillaries is the sinusoids, which have incomplete basement membrane and there is a gap between the endothelial cells called intercellular gap. The escape of developing hematopoietic cells into the sinus for transport to the general circulation occurs through these gaps that develop in the endothelial lining and also even through the endothelial cell cytoplasmic pores. So let's jump to the delicious parts of this video which is the using of the animal bone marrow as a food. Animal bone marrow has been used in cuisine worldwide for millennia such as the famed Italian veal dish Ussupuco alla Milanese. So we have finished our lecture and now let's go to the question of this lecture. When was the earliest fossilized bone marrow discovered? 